and welcome to the Apprentice Support Quick Tips. My name is John McCarrick, and today I'm going to show you how to brand the web console URL with your own custom uh, uh, URL. So what are we going to try to achieve today? Um, instead of using the cloud.acronis.com that comes with the system, uh, you or your customer wants to have a branded URL that they can send uh, folks to. And we can achieve this result at each level in the system. So you can have it for yourself. You can also create this uh, for your customers. Big picture, there are four steps to this process. The first thing we want you to know is there is an entire KB article just on this for all the deep dive into the technical nitty gritty. We're gonna cover most of it right here in this video, uh, but we want you to know there is uh, something for your reference. First thing you're gonna do is download a tool uh, for the appropriate uh, operating system. Then you're going to get a .pem file. We'll discuss what a .pem file is in a moment. You're going to then need to update your DNS entries uh, to have a C name that points to that. And then finally, we're going to go to the command line and we're going to run a command properly configured for that C name and for that PEM file uh, to upload that into our cloud interface. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to download uh, the right tool. You can retrieve the tool by coming over to the appropriate knowledge base article, number 58275, which is the subject of this entire video. If you'll scroll down towards the middle of this, you will find the area where you can download the appropriate uh, one for your environment, Windows, Linux, or Mac. Uh, once you've downloaded that correct tool, uh, you are going to uh, then uh, put it into uh, a correct folder so that you can get there. Uh, uh, later, when you're ready to run the command prompt, you go to that uh, uh, CLI tool by opening that directory where this tool is, and then uh, run it from the command line. Uh, and then you'll proceed to execute the appropriate command. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need is a PEM file. Um, and the PEM file uh, is provided to uh, you or your customer by the SSL certificate provider. Uh, once the certificate is created, there's a certificate file that you can get. And one of the forms of that file is what is known as a .pem file. Uh, this uh, SSL certificate itself is composed of several elements, including both public keys and private keys. This can be important later if you're trying to reassemble a PEM file on your own. The first and easiest thing you can do, of course, is just simply get a .pem file from your provider. But if they don't, they may offer you one of a number of other different kinds of files PFX, P12, PB7. And so what you'll need to do is get a copy of OpenSSL and run an SSL certificate or an OpenSSL command to convert from one sort of uh, certificate file to another sort of certificate file. To retrieve your copy of OpenSSL, you'll again go back to our KB article 58275 and if you'll scroll down about the mid top of the page, you're gonna find links here uh, relative to the various conversion tools along with their command lines. Uh, you'll see here we have the uh, links directly over to the OpenSSL uh, for you to go get the appropriate one. Uh, you'll find a complete package uh, available for you there and all the instruction usage uh, is available uh, as well at that location. Once you've downloaded it, it's time to start using it. We've got any instructions here on the screen for you of how to convert uh, from each one of those three other kinds of files into a .pem file. Alternatively, uh, your customer may not have all the information that you're looking for, but they do have enough information. They have the .crt file and they have .key files, and you can actually take those and merge them uh, into their own pem file, uh, and you will need to have all of the appropriate information uh, from them, and there's instructions here uh, on how exactly you go about con con reconstructing a .pem file if you have all of the component parts, uh, including the public key, private key, and so forth. The next thing you're going to need to do is update the DNS records to match uh, for C names. This will require you to work with uh, the domain name uh, provider uh, for that account. Uh, and so um, what you'll need is to have a C name record uh, for each one of the uh, data centers that you have. In typical case, there's only one data center. Uh, and what you'll do is create a, uh, a, a C name record that can resolve to 
uh, the appropriate uh, domain name that you're picking for this. Um, and we have listed in the KB article all of the, uh, the, uh, the data centers that we have in our system so you can figure out which ones uh, are appropriate for you to link to. In some cases, uh, partners have multiple Cronus data centers that we work with. And so you're going to need to set up an additional uh, C name record for each one of those additional uh, uh, data centers. Finally, the last thing you want to do is then go uh, to the command line in the appropriate directory and run the tool configured with your proper credentials. Uh, you're going to need to collect up all of the information that you have about that first, your username and password. Very importantly, the tenant ID. So you're going to have to actually log into your system, go get the tenant ID. In order to get your tenant ID, you're going to need to log in to your system underneath the clients tab. You will then go over to find the appropriate spot. We will find the tenant. You'll use the triple ellipse here and you'll go up here to show ID. This is your tenant ID that you need uh, in order to make this work. And then uh, there is uh, the file that you downloaded. So you need the relative or absolute path to that file uh, and uh, the file containing the key that you want to upload as well. So. Uh, then you will run the appropriate uh, key uh, uh, command. Uh, you can see an example of that here, uh, exactly how to do that. Uh, and then you're going to wait five minutes uh, for that. Once you finish that, uh, you should be able to access the new domain name uh, instead of uh, the standard uh, cloud.acronis.com. There are a few other actions that you can take. Uh, you can delete that same certificate using a delete command. Uh, using the same terminology. Uh, all you'll need is the username, password, and tenant ID in order to do that. Uh, and then uh, you, some people would like to put a little logo or fave icon uh, up in the URL bar. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, you will have to do uh, the branding of the domain name first because that's a prerequisite here. Uh, but all you'll need is the username, the password, the branded domain name that you want to change, and the uh, fave icon, usually a .png file. And in both the cases for deleting and adding a fave icon, after you run the command, uh, it will ask you for your password before letting you proceed. Uh, if you do have a uh, need for any more information or links to related materials, uh, the link is on the screen for you. Uh, thank you for watching and we hope this helps.